Oh, this is a gaming news roundup. Slap bang in the middle of the E3 conferences for 2017. All very exciting stuff. Loads, loads of news coming out of those. Uh, yeah, and conferences. how about the um, EA conference last night? Absolutely oh, amazing. Yeah. All those, I mean, those I announcements. Can't, can't believe think? like what what they've got in store for us. It's going to yeah. be magnificent. All of that stuff was a good. Yeah, we filmed this on Thursday. And first up in gaming news this week, Gears of War 4 was a behemoth of a game. The game itself wasn't massive, but rather the file size was. Gears 4 became infamous on PC for its massive patches and ridiculous file size, which meant the game took up over 100 gigabyte of space when installed. However, the Coalition, developers of Gears 4, released a 28 gigabyte patch, which actually made the game smaller. The patch included bug fixes and new content for Horde mode, but it also compressed some of the game's files. Now Gears 4 only takes up a paltry 93 gigabytes of space. This is horrendous. Gears of War 4 couldn't be more bog standard for a AAA game. It's got like an eight hour campaign and multiplayer. And how is it how is it ever gonna be like over 50 gigabytes? Like how like what have yeah. they done? To, to make it that bad and the fact that they've they've been able to remove yeah. remove so yeah, much of it, it with one small 28 gigabyte patch and is what, yeah what's what's the standard for me is the size of that patch yeah. 28 gigabytes <laughs> yeah Fucking yeah hell. if you haven't got fiber broadband that's taking you a good couple of days that is taking you a couple of days it, it's ridiculous to think that they expect people to to just be able to download 28 gigabytes like it's nothing next up in an interview with glixel playstation bosses jim ryan and sean lyden talked about playstation's success and how it's winning big time. Sean Lydon described 2016 as the innovation year for Sony, saying how they launched the PS4 Pro, PS4 Slim, and the PSVR headset. The PS4 Pro in particular exceeded their expectations, said Jim Ryan, with one in every five PS4 sold being a Pro, and 40% of Pro sales are people upgrading from the original model. PlayStation head honcho say 2017 is all about the games. When are they ever going to not say that? When is it ever not going to be about the games? When is, when is it going to be the year of... TV and sports, like uh, you know, like it was for Xbox a couple of years ago. It's <laughs> always going to be all about the games. How do they make out that forty percent of the pro sales are people upgrading from the original? Yeah. I, How do they get that number? It's ridiculous, isn't it? It's, it's it must be like surveys or something. But even then, you can only ask like a couple of thousand yeah. people or something. That's completely just pulled out of their ass. In other PlayStation news, PSVR is doing remarkably well, shifting over one million units worldwide. According to Sony boss Jim Ryan again, it was largely down to Sony treating PSVR like it was its own platform rather than an existing add-on for the PS4. Ryan said, to be honest, we didn't know how well it would do. We were optimistic, but something as completely different as virtual reality is tough to predict. In addition to selling 1 million headsets, Ryan also revealed that over 5 million VR games had been sold as well. So if there were any doubts about the future of VR, this may reassure you just a bit. PlayStation VR was always going to be the most popular though, wasn't it? It's the cheapest. Yeah. And, you know, the fact that it sold a million is good, but it's still got a long way to go, I reckon. It's, it's definitely not mainstream yet. It's got a lot of work to do. Yeah, and saying that it's like it's not an add-on, it's like a separate thing. Mm. And that's a bit, I mean, maybe to, maybe to them, for us as an add-on. That's all yeah. it is. Like, You do an need an entire PlayStation 4 console <laughs> to be able to work it, so it is an add-on. Next up, everyone's favorite developer, Hello Games, sent out some mysterious tapes to select members of the No Man's Sky community recently, which apparently contained a kind of cryptic message. There were 16 tapes sent out in total, seven of which have been found so far. On side A of each tape there is a recording of some synth music and on side B there is a pattern of distorted noise. No Man's Sky's Reddit community ran the noise patterns through a spectrograph and found that it contained a coded message which when run through a cipher gave a hexadecimal value which is as exciting as it sounds. The community then converted the value to ASCII which gave them the word portal. Look at all that work, like how do they figure out what the, all that stuff they need to do? Cipher. Uh, Ran the noise pass to a spectrograph contained a decoded message. Is, it, is that going to be worth it? This better be big. This is over-promising with, yeah. with guerrilla marketing. No, what I think it is, is because of the backlash of, of him over-promising. The way that he approached the the, yeah. um, the press in the past was like, he was delivering so much information. Now he's put all his secret <laughs> information on. There's so that. many barriers. <laughs> <laughs> so people can't work out what this bullshit is yeah, this time. only true fans. This is possibly a tease for an upcoming update to No Man's Sky, but maybe if they actually worked on the game instead of doing shit like this, it might have been finished already. Liam's very savage about No Man's Sky. Yeah, brutal. He? He's about the only one who hasn't played it. Yeah, he is, yeah. <laughs> I think he's quite smug about that as well. See? Aren't you, Liam? 
<laughs> Elsewhere in the news, indie puzzle platformer Little Nightmares is getting a substantial DLC pack called Secrets of the Mall. The DLC has players take control of the runaway kid who was briefly seen at the beginning of the original game. This DLC pack promises an alternate story taking place over three chapters, which is interesting because the original game is only five chapters long itself and it can be finished quite quickly. So a three chapter expansion would add a substantial amount of content to a game this small, so maybe for the critics who thought the game was too short, this might be enough to pique their interest. Now I don't think critics thought the game was too short, I thought the players thought the game was too short. Maybe. For critics it's an ideal length because only a few hours, you yeah. get through it, get your review out and then you move on to the next thing. Mm. The game was too short. I, I played it myself, I enjoyed it, I was, it was just getting into it. I felt like that it was just coming into its own and then it ended and I felt like I was shortchanged yeah. in some way. The fact that they're bringing out an expansion, I'll be interested. Three chapters which is like half as long. Yeah exactly, yeah it's going to be over almost two hours I would have thought. But value for money wise you've got, you got to think whether it's going to be worth your money. And finally this week and my favourite story of the week, a skincare clinic in Vietnam has been raising some eyebrows with its new logo design. The Medcare Dermatologist Centre in Vietnam's new logo bore a striking resemblance to that of Resident Evil's Umbrella Corporation. The Umbrella Corporation was a fictional medical company who just happened to also be working on a virus that turned people into zombies. The clinic's promotional material shows off doctors and nurses in white coats performing procedures next to the logo, which looks f***ing terrifying. Medcare Dermatologist Centre addressed the logo on their Facebook page saying it was designed externally for them and then they were surprised by the coincidence and are currently investigating the situation. They paid for this. They, they paid this is, no co this is no coincidence. Somebody's trolling this Medicare, yeah. Medicare Center. It has to be, surely. Yeah. And, if, and if so, I want to know who this guy is and give him a round of applause because this is absolutely hilarious. Well done. How to troll someone and make money in the process. Effort. So that's a lot for this week guys, let us know down in the comments below whether you've ever designed a logo for a Vietnamese skin clinic. Like the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you're new around here, check out some more of our content around about here on the screen and if you're awesome and you want to support us on Patreon there's a link around about here so that you can do that. We'll see you again next time. Bye for now.